Today, we will talk about the abbreviations normally used in altimetry. As we know from previous videos, the vertical position of an aircraft in flight can be expressed in different terms, depending on the reference level in relation to which it is being measured. Specifically, these terms are altitude, height, elevation, and flight level. And in many cases, in order to refer to these terms, certain abbreviations are used. And something to bear in mind is that there are some abbreviations whose meanings are very similar to each other. Therefore, it is important to learn to identify each one and know when to use it. However, before getting into detail with these abbreviations, let's remember some basic concepts. Let's start with the altitude. This is the vertical distance between the mean sea level and a point in the air. Then, we have the height, which is the vertical distance between a point on the ground and a point in the air. The elevation is the vertical distance between the mean sea level and a point on the ground. And finally, the flight level is the vertical distance between the standard pressure level of 2992 inches of mercury or 1013 hectopascals and a point in the air. With this in mind, let's start with the first abbreviation, which is AMSL. This stands for above mean sea level. As its name suggests, this term is used to express either altitudes or elevations, since both of them use the mean sea level as reference. In other words, we will find this abbreviation whenever the reference used is the mean sea level. And a side note here, this term may be displayed as MSL only. Then, we have the abbreviation AGL, which stands for above ground level. This term is used to express height above a point on the ground. And there's something important to keep in mind with this. It is that this term refers to the height in relation to the ground immediately below the aircraft, not the height in relation to the aerodrome level. For example, the AGL height of this aircraft is measured in relation to the peak of the mountain, since it corresponds to the terrain immediately below the aircraft at that moment. Now, if the aircraft maintains level flight and it passes over this valley, its AGL height will actually be greater since the height is now being measured in relation to the valley. And if the aircraft keeps flying and passes over this airport, its AGL height will change once again. This term is sometimes referred to as absolute altitude and can be measured by means of a radio altimeter. A radio altimeter, or radar altimeter, is the only instrument that can provide an accurate AGL reading in real time. It emits radio waves vertically to the ground, where they impact and bounce back to the aircraft. So, based on the time it takes for a wave to go and return, is how the current AGL height is determined and shown in the instrument. The radio altimeter may be installed as an independent instrument, or it can be embedded in the displays of the electronic flight instrument system. So, having understood this concept, what happens if what we want is measure the height of the aircraft in relation to the aerodrome level, regardless of the terrain conditions below the aircraft? Well, in this case we use the next abbreviation, which is AFE. It stands for above field elevation. This term is used to specify heights in relation to a certain aerodrome level, as we can see in this example. Here, regardless of the terrain conditions below the aircraft, if it keeps level flight, the AFE height will remain constant. Sometimes, instead of using AFE, the abbreviation AAL is used, which stands for above aerodrome level. However, it refers to the same concept. Let's see an example where we integrate all the concepts and abbreviations explained so far. Let's say we want to express the vertical position of this aircraft using the different terms. To do so, let's suppose the airport elevation is 2000 feet. So, currently, the aircraft is passing over this mountain, and let's say that its AGL height is 500 feet. However, its AFE height is greater, in this case 1,500 feet. And finally, according to this data, the altitude AMSL is 3,500 feet. Let's now see some practical examples of where we can find each of these terms. Let's begin with AGL. Here we have the vertical airspace classification of a terminal area or TMA. In the lower part we can see that the class delta airspace starts above 1,500 feet AGL, so we would have something like this. 
In this case, the lower limit of the class delta airspace depends on the irregularities of the terrain, since it is expressed in terms of AGL. Another situation where AGL heights are used is for example in the radio altimeter callouts. The thing is that most modern aircraft incorporate automatic radio altimeter callout systems. These are very helpful for the flight crew, since it tells them what is the current height above terrain in real time, increasing their situational awareness. For example, suppose an aircraft is approaching to land at this airport. As it descends below a certain height above terrain, the radio altimeter will begin to indicate the height through callouts, such as this one at 1,000 feet. 1,000. This way, at certain heights above the ground, some callouts will sound in the cockpit. Like this. 400. Now, despite the aircraft is descending, there might be some fluctuations on the radio altimeter indications due to the irregularities of the terrain. 500. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Besides this, some aircraft also incorporate ground proximity warning systems, which depend in part on the indications of the radio altimeter, giving callouts like these. Too low, flaps. Too low, gear. Too low, terrain. Terrain, terrain, pull up. However, we will not go into detail with this. Let's move on to the following example. The airspeed limitations specified for each airspace class is expressed in terms of AMSL, as we can see here. Therefore, in this case, the echo airspace has a limitation of 250 knots below 10,000 feet above mean sea level. This is just an example of where we can find the AMSL abbreviation. Now we will see an example where the abbreviation AAL is used. This statement, for example, specifies that the aircraft must be configured and stabilized for landing at 500 feet AL. So that is, 500 feet above the airport. Otherwise, it will have to execute a go-around. Now, remember that AAL and AFE have the same meaning. Therefore in this case, the airport elevation is being used as reference, regardless of the conditions of the terrain. In this other statement, it is specified that the landing gear must be down and locked at 1,500 feet AFE, regardless of the terrain conditions as we can see in this example. Now, aside from the abbreviations that we have already seen, there's another one that is widely used as well. It is FL, which stands for flight level. When a value is preceded by this abbreviation, it means that it is the vertical distance between the standard isobar of 2992 inches of mercury, or 1013 hectopascals, and the aircraft. As we can see in this example, 20,000 feet above the standard pressure level would be represented as flight level 200. Now, in some cases, we might find values without abbreviation. In these cases, it is assumed that the value is in relation to mean sea level, as we can see in these example of 15,000 and 16,000 feet. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.